In this video, we're going to talk about acceleration. Acceleration is a vector. And a vector is a measurement that includes a direction. Now, acceleration is going to be related to velocity because velocity is also a vector. And so velocity also includes a direction. Now, speed, on the other hand, is a scalar. And speed is related to velocity and the fact that speed is also going to describe how fast an object is going. However, speed does not include a direction. Scalars only have a magnitude, no direction. You may have heard of your gas pedal being called by a different name. You may have heard of it uh, called an accelerator before. If you've never heard that before, then you just learned something new. Some people call it an accelerator. Now, if you press down on the accelerator of your car, what happens? Well, you're going to speed up. And if we want to use physics terms, your velocity is going to begin to change. And specifically, your velocity is going to start increasing. Now, your direction isn't really probably going to change when you step on the accelerator, unless you're going to start making a turn. And so the magnitude of the velocity is the thing that's changing here. Now, if you were to put the pedal to the metal, in other words, press down really, really hard on that gas pedal, we could say that you're going to be accelerating quickly. Or in other words, your velocity is going to change very rapidly. And so acceleration is also going to include a time component. It matters if your velocity is changing gradually or if your velocity is changing very quickly. And so since acceleration includes time, here's how we can define acceleration. Acceleration is the rate at which velocity changes. And this is where our time component come in. Now if we want to rewrite this in the way uh, an equation would look here, this is what this would look like. So acceleration is going to be equal to the change in velocity over the change in time. If we want to use symbols here, we use the letter A for acceleration. And velocity is a V. And if we want to indicate change in, we use a delta symbol. That little triangle means change in velocity over the change in time. And so this is the equation for acceleration. The units for acceleration are also important, and they're going to be based on the units for velocity and the units for time. Now, the SI unit for velocity is going to be meters per second. The SI unit for time is seconds. And so the units for acceleration are going to be meters per second per second, or in other words, meters per second squared. Okay, so now that we have this equation, let's try using it. Uh, in a problem here. So this problem says a car is traveling north at 135 kilometers per hour and then the driver suddenly uh, sees a police car on the side of the road and the driver hits the brakes and slows down to 108 kilometers per hour and this takes 3.56 uh, seconds to do. And then it asks what was the car's average acceleration while the driver was braking? When I solve a word problem like this, the first thing I like to do is underline the given amounts. And I've done that in green there. The other thing I like to do is underline what the question is actually asking me to do. And so right here at the end, it says, what was the car's average acceleration? And so I'm going to be calculating acceleration. Since I'm calculating acceleration, and I know that by reading the problem, the next thing I like to do uh, is I like to write down the equation I'm going to use. And so this is the equation that I'm going to be working with. Uh, delta V over delta T. Now those delta symbols mean the change in and so I could actually expand this a little bit to say the final velocity minus the initial velocity. That's what that delta symbol means. It means the final minus the initial. So I can do the same thing on the bottom here. We have the final time minus the initial time. After I have the equation, I just like to list the data that I'm going to be working with just to help me organize things. And so I'm going to list all these variables and try to put numbers to them. And the variables I'm going to list here, I'm going to kind of forget about this part because I've expanded the equation to include all of these different things here. And plus my acceleration there. So I have acceleration, I have velocity final, I have the initial velocity, I have the final time and I have the initial time. Now luckily in this question this final and initial time this has already been given to me as delta t so I didn't actually have to expand that that's right here. I know that the time that it took to change the velocity is right here 3.56 seconds. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in. So that has already taken care of these two 
uh, variables right there. Now the acceleration I'm solving for, so I'm just going to put a question mark there. I'm not going to worry about that because I'm going to solve for that in the equation. And then my final and initial velocity here. The final velocity is going to be the speed that this driver ended up going in the end, which is right here. 108 kilometers per hour, and so his initial was 135.5 kilometers per hour. Now, there's a bit of a problem here because my units don't match up. I have seconds here, I have hours here, and then also I have kilometers when I know the SI unit should be meters. I should have my answer in meters per second. So I do need to convert these two velocities before I do anything here. So let's go ahead and convert those. So we have 135 kilometers per hour. First thing I'll do is change this kilometer into a meter. And I'm going to use a conversion factor here. I want meters to be my new unit. I want to get rid of the kilometers. There are 1,000 meters in one kilometer. Since kilometers are on opposite sides of the fraction like that, they're going to cancel. And then I can convert the hours into seconds. And so I want my answer to be in per second. So I want to get rid of those hours there. And there are 3,600 seconds in an hour. Hours are going to cancel and I will be left with units of meters per second. And so when I do the math here I'm really taking 135 times 1000 divided by 3600 since that's on the bottom. And right, so we're going to divide it by that. So our answer here is 37.6 meters per second. And I will convert the other one here 108 kilometers per hour. I'm not going to go through all the math here. I'll just tell you what that comes out to. We get 30 meters per second. And so I can plug in these values here for um, my velocities here. So my final velocity is actually going to be 37.6 meters per second. And then we have 30 meters per second there. All right, now I have all of my data. I have my equation that I'm going to use, and I've made sure all of my data is in SI units. So let's go ahead and plug this into our equation here. Let's see if I can give myself some more room here. I'm just going to rewrite this equation right down here. So acceleration is equal to V final minus V initial over delta t. Acceleration is equal to, now I can plug in my numbers here, so my v final is 30, v initial is 37.6. That's going to be over my time of 3.56 seconds, and I should have kept the meters per second units there. Alright, when I do the math here, Acceleration is going to be equal to negative 2.13 meters per second squared. And you may be wondering, how can we have a negative value? Well, if you look back at the problem here, um, this driver is actually slowing down. And so it, uh, the driver actually has a negative acceleration, which makes sense. You can also think of it this way. If we made the north direction here, since the car was traveling north initially, if we made the north direction positive and then the south, di south direction negative, um, you could see that our numbers add up here and it's going to make so sense as well. So we could also have said for our acceleration, and we'd also be right here, I could have said 2.13 meters per second squared to the south. And that would also indicate direction. So this negative sign is indicating direction, and then I could also indicate direction by saying it's south. Okay, so let's see if you get it. We'll just kind of do a recap here. Let's just say you're traveling down a road here. You're traveling north. You're traveling at a speed of 60 kilometers per hour, and you see that it's wide open road on this, uh, this particular road, and so you speed up to 100 kilometers per hour. Did you accelerate? Well, yes, of course you accelerate because you are increasing your velocity. Let's try another one here. So let's say you're again driving down a road 
And this time you have your cruise control set at 60 kilometers per hour. So your cruise control is set, you're not going to speed up at all. And you come into this turn here, you make the turn, and you are traveling an entirely new direction in the end. Did you accelerate this time? Remember, your cruise control was set, so you didn't speed up at all. Yes, you accelerated again. Although the magnitude of the velocity did not change, the direction did change. And remember, acceleration has both a magnitude and a direction. So if your direction changes, you have accelerated. Okay, here's one more. You come flying down the road um, after that turn and you see a stop sign and you have to suddenly slam on your brakes, brakes slowing down to zero. Did you accelerate? Yes, again, you did accelerate. Your velocity changed. Now, although your velocity did not increase, it actually decreased, you still have acceleration. So you could have positive acceleration, things that are getting faster, but we can also have negative acceleration when things are getting slower. And that is acceleration.